How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is Martin Kendall. So I did my internship in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, but before I start that, reasons why I applied. I love science. Uh, it's really, really important thing to me. Favorite subject in school, obviously. I also know people have done this internship before. Tashi Hackett did it last year. He went to San Francisco and worked in a hospital. So that was really incredible. He only told me great things. Uh, it's real science. Uh, as Sabina said at the beginning of the night, it seems like an age ago. Uh, it's actual real science. Like this is the future. And Pinhead has some incredible connections. Uh, Joe Tanner, who's an astronaut, actually is related to Pinhead and he's the one who set me up with this. So I told Pinhead that I want to do something in the field of electrical engineering. So that just means working with electronics, obviously. And although my project didn't directly relate to this, I had a lot of aspects of electrical engineering, and I'm really glad I got to do what I did, because I also got to experience a lot of other things, such as aerospace and uh, just some chemistry and just a lot of stuff that I hadn't been exposed to before. So that was really awesome. Uh, I'm really happy that I got exposed to this, and yeah, it was great. So where I stayed, I went to Boulder. Uh, this is a picture, really poor quality, iPhone quality. But I actually took this picture from way up, uh, I believe it's to the west of Boulder on top of some mountains, one of the last nights I was there. So Boulder, it's an amazing place. Uh, there, I mean, it's just an incredible place to be. There's lots of friendly people. And also it has one of the top five colleges for aerospace in the entire nation. So I was with the best of the best, and it was really incredible. So where I worked, I worked at the laboratory for air and space physics. So that the abbreviation is LASP. And they're actually one of the leading college uh, organizations that sends things into space. They alone have sent uh, rockets or satellites to every single planet in our solar system, and they've existed longer than NASA. So I was working with someone who's been a PI, which is a principal instructor, on a ton of these projects, Dr. Woods. He was an amazing person. The guy is so cool. He has a machine shop in the basement of his house. Like, he would literally machine stuff on the weekends for us. So it was incredible. He was the big boss. Uh, James Mason was someone else that I worked directly under. He was a PhD student. He's been on the project the entire life, uh, all three years. And uh, everyone there, I was the youngest, but they really made me feel at home. So this is just some of the things that I did. I really, I did a ton of things, mostly because the team was most, so small over the summer that we really had to do everything. So that picture on the far left, that we're actually doing a test with one of the solar panels, that thing in your hand, that's actually uh, one of the two solar arrays, or three solar arrays, I'm sorry, that's going to be on the satellite. So what we're doing is we have a chain of resistors hooked up that I soldered, and we were testing at what resistance we got the maximum power out of the satellites. So we did this a lot, because uh, the, the energy is incredibly important. SISWI, which is another miniature satellite that was sent up by the same program, their batteries have slowly died, but it's a miniature satellite, they're only expected to live approximately six months, and it's been up for over two years. So that's something incredible. Uh, next to that, that's something that I spent a lot of time on and was incredibly annoying. That's called a sonic cleaner. So what it does is it's actually this box that you fill with water, and then you fill beakers with alcohol, and you put dirty things such as screws that need to be cleaned. And actually, step back, the reason the screws need to be cleaned is because when they go into space, there's no pressure. So if there's any dust or like this stuff called vac coating, which they put on screws to stop it from rusting, it actually leaves the screws and just creates this cloud of disgustingness around the satellite, which stops it from doing anything. So it's really important that the screws and every single part of it's clean. So you put the screws in the alcohol, and this machine shakes it with sonic waves. And it sounds something like, Dree! it's literally just the most annoying sound in the world, and it shakes the dust off the screws. So that's, I spent a lot of time in there, and that was incredible. This, uh, this picture in the top right, uh, that that's the, EPS board, electrical power system. So this is actually the board that's gonna send the electricity to all parts of the satellite. And I actually, we got the boards in because we had to redesign them. And then I had to attach a bunch of the connectors. Uh, I had to draw out where things were gonna go where, before it was sent to the professionals where they actually attached it to the board. So it was really cool. I got to work with one of the things that's going to be put on the satellite. And then below that, uh, I cannot remember what that's called, but basically what happens, we had these shoulder bolts that were the right material, stainless steel, 18.8 and they were the right size, the right diameter, but they were too long. So I actually took them to a grind wheel, grinded down the screws, and then make sure they were threaded correctly. So I was shortening screws. Um, so just some more stuff I did. I'm telling you, I did so much stuff. Uh, top left corner, I didn't really work on that, but that's actually the plate that's gonna be used as the side of the miniature satellite. Beneath that, that's a vacuum chamber. So it's actually this plate that, that we put down on the satellite, and it sucks all the air out, so it crushes it down, and it actually, seals the satellite, the satellite actual individual cells to a silver hydroxide, or 
silver epoxy, I'm sorry, silver epoxy, which conducts electricity and connects it to the rest of the board. So that, that was pretty neat. Uh, next to that, that is a picture of the actual construction of flight sides, the SPS, and deployable solar arrays for the satellite. So that's what's going to be sent to space. That was right before I left. I didn't actually get to work on the actual uh, construction, but I worked it on the plan. Um, and then above that, the picture of my arm. So the blue jacket, that's an ESD coat. And what it does, because we're working with a lot of sensitive electronics, so static electricity built up from your body, if you touch the board, it'll destroy the entire thing. Like just the static electricity from your body will short circuit everything. So you wear that jacket, which keeps static electricity to your body, and that bracelet grounds you. So even if there is static electricity, it goes into a t the table, it's, which is grounded into the ground. Uh, below that, that's me and Sid, who's uh, someone in a master's program that I was working with, and we're going into a class 10,000 clean room. So that means that there's one particle of contamination for every 10,000 particles of air. So that's incredible. That's where they assemble satellites, literally. It's that clean. So I have two pairs of gloves, two pairs of boots, two head masks, two face masks, an entire bodysuit. So it was really cool. And the reason we're going in there is to get screws. But it was really cool. <laughs> uh, and then next to that, this big picture, uh, I know it looks like a third grader drew it, but this was so hard. <laughs> this is actually using a program called um, uh, Not MATLAB. Uh, I'll, it'll come to me later. But it's a coding program that's used for analyzing data. And I actually wrote a program that took the housekeeping data, which is like all the battery charge and the temperature, and it put it into these graphs. And then there was a quote unquote highly sophisticated battery gauge that was supposed to tell us how the batteries were doing, but it didn't work. So I had to write, uh, do some calculus, and in the top left, it gives the actual capacity of the battery, not the fuel gauge capacity, which was wrong. <laughs> so the crew, uh, this is just everyone I worked with. Uh, they were incredible to me. Dr. Woods, he was honestly the smartest person I've met in my entire life, and he was incredibly humble and nice to me. So it was, inc it was great to meet him and to do things with him. Uh, as I said, they've sent missions to every planet in our solar system. I don't know if you guys heard of MAVEN, but that's landing, actually I'm not sure. It's either landing on or has very, very recently landed on Mars. And it was Dr. Woods and this guy Rick I worked with worked on MAVEN. So I was with people who have sent like, in, like major satellites and rockets. Uh, it, was an it was in a steam lab and they had no problem welcoming me in and making me feel welcome to the community. Uh, I, again, I cannot stress enough, they were amazing. Uh, they helped me understand the science they were doing. And everyone was nice to the youngest kid in the entire building. <laughs> so just some kind of interesting fact. I spent the entire six weeks of my internship alone. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not, I mean, obviously I was with people, but I lived by myself. I was living in a graduate student's apartment. Uh, I had a bike. It was only like a five-minute bike ride to my lab. And it was really awesome. I, I knew a lot of people in the area, and I got to just spend some quality time, see what college is actually like living on my own. And uh, I played some pickup soccer, went to a lot of movies, and it was just a really amazing time. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to cover everything that I did, and I'm trying to keep it short because everyone wants to go home. But if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask me. Um, I'd be happy to answer them. Also, disclaimer, I only worked on the project for six weeks, and it's been going on for three years. So credit goes to them. <laughs> I barely, I barely, I was in a very small part of it. But uh, just my thanks, I'd like to thanks Shinlin Lee, who I didn't directly work with, but he did all the paperwork to get me there because Dr. Woods was busy. He was amazing. He put up with me being lean on emails, <laughs> everything I could ask for. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Woods and James Mason for being directly above me and helping me and helping me understand everything that I did. I'd also like to thank the Pinhead Board of Directors, Sarah Holbrook, uh, just everyone for doing everything that made it possible to get me here or made it possible for me to be here. So it was really a great experience. Uh, I couldn't have done anything like it anywhere else. Thank you so much.